In season three of Pack Squads, we made World Series for the first time this year. It took three seasons. We finally got in with the Pack Squad team, and our reward, we took the Takashi Greg Maddox 95 overall as our reward. Now, this is the first time we've had the opportunity to do this. We get to keep our World Series reward along with our MVP and our Cy Young. So we have three keepers for season four. On top of that, I actually played a game with Greg Maddox. You're going to see his debut right now. Keep in mind. I recorded this before the season ended. After I got in World Series, we took Greg Maddox, and then I actually recorded a game with Greg Maddox and debuted him on Legend. We went into this game already 1-0 on Legend from a game earlier in the Championship Series run where we got matched up with someone in World Series. But this was our second go on Legend. I was feeling good going into this game. Because of that, however, Greg Maddox's energy is going to be down below like 40% going into episode one of season four. So we're gonna be relying on the rest of our staff until we can throw with him in the first, or is his first game in season four. But also like to note that in the montage season finale video, when I talked about the team for season four at the end, I forgot about the collection rewards. They are on the team. The 87 overall, Steven Strasburg, which is the collection reward for the Washington Nationals. The 85 overall, Brandon Webb, which is the collection reward for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the 83 overall, Tony Perez, who is the collection reward for the Cincinnati Reds are all on the team and will be used they are keepers and they're playing the they're now the foundation of our squad moving forward from season to season remember we have like a dozen collections that only need one two or three players to complete my i really think that by the end of season four at the start of season five we're gonna have mostly a collection reward keeper squad along with our mvp cy young world series reward and that's how we're gonna start every season moving forward and that's also why i'm giving myself a gold baseline here in season four i'm bumping up the floor so that the team isn't absolutely garbage in that first game of season four and then at season five when we start season five we're most likely going to have a lot of cards like tony perez for example those gold collection rewards a lot of the easier collections that we're about to knock out here in season four since we're only a couple cards away you can see a lot more cards like tony perez in our lineup so that'll be a really fun touch at the start of season five when we wipe the squad and all the collection rewards that we've gotten through season four that we probably won't use because our team's going to be too good by the time we get them we'll then use them at the start of season five as our keeper team and our baseline squad that was the idea when i implemented this but it, it's taken us four seasons now to really start knocking out collections so we're finally seeing it get put in motion again just an update on collections like i said we have the nationals the reds and the diamondbacks done and we are just a couple cards away from so many just four cards away from the Giants and we don't need anything more than a 77 overall the Pirates were at 35 out of 40 we don't need anything more than Jared Eikhoff to finish them the Cardinals we already have Nolan Arenado if we're lucky enough to pull gold, Paul Goldschmidt this season we potentially get Lee Smith the Rockies were just three cards away from a gold Larry Walker we have the Padres we've already pulled all of their diamonds we have all of their big guns 81 U Darvish is their best card that we need we're only four cards away from a 93 tony gwen baseline squad moving forward is going to be insane and i'm not kidding like every single team in our collection looks like this we are only eight couple cards away from top to bottom for the majority of these teams and a lot of these teams like i said with these gold rewards like the marlins for example we're gonna start knocking these out this season no doubt about it. moral of the story i'm excited to see the collections as keeper like we're pretty much gonna have a collection keeper squad next season i'm really pumped about that i was excited about that when the, when the year started i saved some really good packs through that grind we have another nl west pack we're gonna be able to reacquire bobby miller uh, we have an al central pack where we're gonna have good options there we have another legend takashi pack we have some flash back packs and these are multiple round packs these packs right here will really help us early in this run pack squad season four is going to be insane if you're excited let's get 2,000 likes on this video right now as you guys can see we will be keeping mike trout over larry walker this season and i know i had a lot of people commenting saying i need to take the true mvp which you can definitely say was larry walker his ops was like 250 points higher but most valuable player the value in mvp isn't just based on your play how hard it is going to be to get mike trout can't be ignored this is an infinitely valuable card within diamond dynasty and he's so hard to get we can get larry walker by just getting more headliner packs and landing on a rare round and grabbing him again mike trout is someone we, we we might not see again for years so we gotta do it we gotta use mike trout any other player i would have gone larry walker but there's just no way we don't start this season with mike trout and that was the majority opinion in the comments but i wanted to at least address 
uh, the minority that wanted to see Larry Walker because deep down inside, I do agree with you. Uh, Mike Trout's just an anomaly situation and we, we got to take advantage of it. But without further ado, you want to see that Greg Maddox gameplay? I got the voiceover and gameplay for you right now. So here we go, Greg Maddox on the road against Parallel 3, Dallas Keuchel in a creative time. I love the aesthetic once you're in World Series and playing on Legend, you have that World Series graphic around the scoreboard and the load up screen. Good looking stuff. They need to do this for championship series and even division series, just like the real life playoffs. But we're on legend here against Dallas Keuchel. We start the game with a strikeout and then we get a line drive to center for an out with Cattell Marte. Our MVP was insane this season. He lines out the start this one and then Larry Walker rolls over a slider. Three up, three down in the top of the first. In the bottom of the first, Greg Maddox is going to come out of the gate hot. A strikeout. Then Jose Ramirez in there. 0-2 cutter up and in. Another strikeout. And then Gunnar Henderson, first pitch slider down and in. Good pitch. Looking for a chase swing there. Got the slider out over the plate. That's not a good spot, but a foul ball. It's 1-1 now going back to the sinker. 1-2. and two. And now the cutter in. Got him for a strikeout. Greg Maddox strikes out the side in his debut episode, and we immediately get him the lead. Mike Trout goes oppo blast on legend. An absolute moonshot for who is going to be most likely our keeper for season four. Joe Maurer, next batter, line drive out to left. I'm sure if we get another cover athlete pack, we will see him once again. Tatis then comes up with one out. Good cutter on the black there, down and in from our opponent for a pop-up. And then he dots the sinker inside on Garrett Mitchell. Pitching very effectively inside was my opponent after that home run. Bottom two, 2-1. Two, Greg Maddox had the striking out the side. First time our opponent puts the ball in play, he ties it up. A home run that's followed up by a deep fly ball to center. Garrett Mitchell will squeeze that. And then Henry Davis is going to step in. He takes two, takes a cutter, takes it 1-0. Then we throw another cutter away, gets it to 2-1. 2-1, we're going to throw another cutter inside, get it even at two, and then the sinker off of that cutter. Deadly combo for the strikeout. So we got a home run, a fly ball, a strikeout, and now an 0-2 count on George Valera. Got 23 pitches here in the second. He's batting 438, and I wanted that change up down at the ankles. He floated it way out, right, right down the middle of the plate, actually. It's like the worst possible place you can throw any pitch, let alone a change up. Not very Greg Maddox-like. We're going to bounce back here, though. Uh, get through the game. We're down by what well, we took the lead early in this one, and I was feeling good going into the bottom of the second since we had that strike out the side to start the game. My opponent instantly fired back. So what are we going to do? We're going to counter punch as well. Mike Schmidt rips a sinker into the gap. Greg Maddox comes up. He's going to bunt Mike Schmidt over to third base. So now we are not just 90 feet away from tying the game, but we're going to get more. Jorge Polanco, a nuclear bomb, a little bit in on the PCI, it doesn't matter. No doubter kicks in in this creative stadium with a low fence out and left. 412 on a line for Jorge Polanco, and we get the lead back. And Greg Maddox hitch through it. Already got the pop up. Now grip Byron Buxton in, chops a cutter, and this was very frustrating animation for me. Jorge Polanco, not the best defender in the world, but got to have a little bit of awareness with Byron Buxton at the dish. Just slows down, takes a three-step crow hop with 99 speed, and he beats it out for a single. Next batter comes in, drops one right in front of Mike Trout for another single. So now there's two on with one out, and in an 0-2 count, we're going to make a play. Mike Trout will get to that one. I had to show that clip for a second there. In real time, I thought it was going to be a bleeder. Next guy up in a 1-2 count, slider down. Good block, but the runners do advance. It got a little bit too far away we can focus on the batter though with two outs yeah two runners in scoring position now and two two change up we got him way out in front for a strikeout so we're going to take our lead into the fourth now where he's going to get us to chase with mike trout on that sinker away next man now joe mauer crushes a cutter thought it was gone at first but it had some top spin it comes down off the wall for a double so we got to get another knock to bring him around same sinker really that struck out trout that one on the corner it's another strikeout this inning, and then Lou Bob's going to ground out. We strand that runner in scoring position. Joe Maurer, lefty-lefty with an extra base hit. We don't bring him around. I did have to take Greg Maddox out there, though. So, unfortunately, his start was cut short in this game. He comes out with the lead, but he's not qualified for the win. Joe Maurer hit that double, and I just felt like this is one of those games we needed the offense. So, we went to the bench, didn't cash in, and now Greg Maddox is out of this game in the fifth inning. Josh Hader already pitched through the fourth. 
Now we got Goose Gossage out there in the fifth. Lead the game off, or lead the inning off, I should say, with a walk. He's going to bunt to Mike Schmidt here, where we will get up and get the lead runner. Thought we were going to get a double play there, but the pitcher will be on first base for Byron Buxton, who strikes out. And then Jose Ramirez, not done here in the fifth inning. Two out, base hit with that runner on first. Gossage already at 19 pitches. His 20th pitch to Gunnar Henderson is a no out moonshot to right. And that was the big momentum changer of this particular game. Into the six now after we didn't score in the top half. It's another solo shot with two outs. Right when I thought I was going to get through that and get a goose egg, get back in the box. Hits a solo shot. And then in a one-two count to Justin Foscu, hits another one. Just makes it a four-run game. Too late in this one. Our opponent just locked in and went to work. So there it is, tough loss to end the year, but we did make World Series for the first time. I would like to get in a little bit sooner uh, this season so that maybe I can push my rating up a little bit higher. I, don't, I, I did get in with like a day to spare though, I'm not gonna lie. I did have some time uh, to grind my rating on Monday before the season ended, but I spent all day Monday just trying to get that video edited so I could get it up for you guys. And I still didn't get it up till like one o'clock in the morning because it was a half hour long video, uh, but I did get that one Greg Maddox game in and I wanted to get that video recorded while I was in World Series so that it was on Legend. I was just adamant about playing another game on legend because this season once we get to world series i am going to make a push and i'll probably do the montage video of us getting to world series and then if we get in again my uh, my plan here is to do a second montage video of my legend grind and see how far i can get how high i can get the rating with the pack squad team so we're going to do all of our pack squad episodes like normal season four all through july at the end of the month you'll get your world series montage highlight video and then hopefully depending on if i get in or when also going to do a legend push and see if we can get to a thousand. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tough loss. It happens. Greg Maddox, you know, he's good, but is he legend? I don't think he's really a legend type of pitcher. Maybe more luck with him on Hall of Fame where I can paint. But on legend, you know, we're facing people. My opponent maybe just got off a game against Bobby Miller on legend. And all of a sudden you got Greg Maddox in there. Basically slow pitch softball. <laughs> Still fly, I'm still flying, let's go.